So I am here to talk about Share.js. Um, but before I talk about Share.js, it kind of makes sense to talk about sockets. So since the Worldwide Whiteboard Workshop, who has used sockets in a project? Out of curiosity. Good, good amount. That's good. Um, so I really like the idea of sockets because the web is you know, this sort of collaborative place where people can go and share information and share websites, and it's, it's a network. And s but when you visit a web page, you're still, for the most part, having an isolated experience. It's your experience. And sockets sort of open that up and makes the individual web page collaborative. So that seems really cool to me. Um, but just started to go over how sockets work and how we set them up is um, when we write our server, or when we run our server, a callback function is described, um, defined. And then when a user comes in, it will run that callback function. This uh, server will make uh, listeners and broadcasters for that client. And then on the client side, we'll have, listener, here's your, we'll have listeners and broadcasters that will essentially communicate with each other. And we pass data back and forth. But we kind of have to handle the data ourselves there. Um, and that's one of the things that was one of the bigger problems for me working on my uh, Stackathon project was how do I handle that data. Um, so kind of a common uh, collaborative use for sockets is to share text. Have it so that when you type, they see what's typing, vice versa. Uh, so I was sort of trying to figure out how I would solve this uh, when I was doing my project. And the approach that I took was essentially whenever I'd make a change, so in this case, add a little exclamation point to my text, I would send the whole block of text to the server, and then that would send the whole block of text out to the client, at which point it would re-render. And this works for the most part, especially in an isolated presentation. Um, but it does have some problems. Uh, the smaller problem is that you're sending a lot, a lot of unnecessary data. You know, I only changed one character in there, and yet you can imagine that if this was a big text area with a ton of text, you're sending all that when you don't need to. The other sort of bigger problem is that you can overwrite people's edits, which is not great. We're developing on local computers, and that's what most of our experiences is. is. And when I know, at least when I was um, testing sockets, I had one browser in Chrome and one in Firefox, so I could have done a private browser in Chrome. But it was pretty instantaneous. But that's not the case in the real world. There's delay between when you send something out and when it's going to get to everyone else. So if I were to broadcast a change, and then someone else were to make a change before they got my broadcasted change, their change would get submitted, I would get their broadcasted change, and if it's the whole text, it doesn't include my original change, my edits are wiped. Not very good. So a way to sort of get around this is instead of uh, sending the whole text, you just send the change. So when I make my exclamation point change, it goes in and says, hey, I added an exclamation point at point six, uh, position 16. And then this gets broadcast out to everyone else, and it's got the exclamation point there. Problem solved, but not quite. So the problem with this is that you end up with kind of a weird uh, situation, where let's say that you have two people editing at. One person deletes the T at position 1. The other inserts H at position 0. So it will then broadcast out its changes, which will get rendered by the other person. And then you end up with this where the person over there that puts in the H at position 0 as the second change kind of gets what you would expect. But because what is at position 1 has changed for this person, all of a sudden, not only do you not get what you expect, but you have two different versions of the text on two different computers, which is not great for collaboration. So back to the point of this whole presentation, Share.js. Share.js fixes this. And essentially what it does is starts out the same. And I should say that these examples were uh, given by the uh, writer of Share.js, and I found them really valuable, so I wanted to share them with you. Um, but it uh, starts out with the same changes, but after that, it puts those changes into an operational transform function, which is essentially a function designed to find the intent of the changes and make it so that whatever order they're done in, it does the same thing. So that second change in this example says, oh, I know you said delete one at position one, but I kind of figured out that with what everyone else has done, this is what you really meant, at which point, broadcast back, ha. Huh. Um, or everyone renders, ha, huh? it broadcasts the changes. So that's pretty cool. Um, 
Another thing that it does is uh, versioning. And this sort of helps in that sort of slow connection. What we saw before was two people making changes sort of at the same time. But if um, we, when, uh, I guess I should say, when um, we are broadcasting changes and making these changes, it's only broadcasting those changes, but it is keeping a version of that text on the server. And it is associating a version number with that, that text uh, that gets incremented at each change. So if someone changes at to hat, version gets incremented. Um, if someone else wants to change hat to heat, they insert the he, he, he. But let's say they're far away, and their change doesn't get back to the server for a while. And in that time, some other people have changed hat to chat to cat. Uh, Share.js is smart enough to say, OK, I got hat, which I changed to heat from version 2. So I'm going to try to submit it back, but version 3 has already been created. So instead, I'm going to grab version 3 and apply my change to that. But now version 4 has already been created. So I'm going to grab version 4 and apply my change to that. There is no version 4, so that becomes the version that is stored on the server. Um, so it allows everyone to sort of keep this going on. And it's really based off of a uh, version control system uh, with one sort of difference is that it doesn't deal with the merge conflicts. So one group of people here were trying to get to cat. The other, group, uh, the other person was trying to get to heat. Seat is what no one wanted. So you know, it's not perfect there, but it preserves the intention of everyone. And it's up to the user at that point to sort of fix what's going on. So instead of trying to you know, figure out what one person wanted, it preserves everyone intention, uh, and everyone's intention. And let's go from there. Another cool thing that it does, um, so I was, uh, I went to a website that pretty much had a demo using Share.js. And it will s only send one request at a time. Um, so as I was typing in the this is a test line, it was changing up. I then disconnected my internet and made two changes in each one. So I deleted the A in this is a test. And I changed test to cool over here. I then reconnected the internet. And pretty much it had stored all those changes that had happened. For instance, in this one where we changed test to cool as one change, at which point when I reconnect to the internet, it sends that out and resolves it. And we end up with, this is cool. Um, so this kind of leaves us with the question of, how do we use Share.js? Because we had sort of started talking with, how do we use sockets? Um, and the whole point of this is to make it simple. And it's pretty simple. So um, an example here uh, for the server side, if you're using an Express app, you define your Express app. You require the Share.js library, which is an NPM install. Um, you can include a database um, or authentication options. Uh, the database that's most commonly used with it is Redis, but I have seen people um, online uh, looking around using Mongoose. Um, and that'll make it so that all these changes are persistent. And then you really just attach the app with the options to the Share.js server. And that's all you have to do for the base case uh, on the server side. And then on the client side, it's not really much worse. <laughs> um, you include the scripts that you need. Uh, let's say that I want to be, I want to share a DOM element, um, a text area, for instance, uh, and have that be my shared resource. I get the text area that I want. I then uh, open up a Share.js uh, um, connection and this home right here is essentially the equivalent of the room in Socket. So if I wanted to have separate rooms, I could uh, do that. Um, there's authentication stuff you can't do in here. I didn't look into that too much. And then you have the type, which is text here. And then all you do is attach that DOM element to the doc, uh, which is passed in through the callback function. And that's it. That's the entire Share.js setup. So it really is that easy. But wait, there's more. Um, not only does it work with text, but it also supports uh, just JSON and rich text um, too, which if you think about it with JSON is pretty cool because it means not only is it just collaborative typing in this narrow situation, but if you wanted to just share a JavaScript object, custom JavaScript object that doesn't have functions on it, so JSON is stratifiable, um, you can do that. So it sort of just helps to make the web a little bit more collaborative. So yeah couple resources. Uh, the documentation isn't great, um, but it's there. And then uh, 
this talks about the different uh, the this one talks about the different types. Um, so you can sort of see how it changes. The, for instance, the uh, or I guess this one's just about JSON, but the control is a little bit different. And then the last one was a tutorial that really helped me sort of get down, wrap my head around it. But yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same as sockets, except that if you just want the base setup, you know, this is all you have to do. So it sort of makes a lot of assumptions in terms of how you're sharing it unless you specify otherwise. Um, but yeah, so you don't need to say render it out this way because I guess the system, the logic for how it shares it is already there, so you don't need to define it. Uh, yeah, I think I think what you would do is, if you wanted to do that, you would essentially be sharing either a string or an object or something. Um, the easiest way would be just to share text, uh, create the, uh, and then whenever you click the button, you change that text. And if the, um, I'm not sure exactly how you would do it within the JavaScript. I was mostly looking at DOM elements, but on a change, it would go and share that. So, so you have to make a change to the element that you're sharing with this thing in the past. Yeah. 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 And that's because it broadcasts the changes of what's going on. It doesn't broadcast the entire element. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Good. So um, yeah, it's it's a little weird. It, it's it's an open connection like sockets. So you're not manually you know updating anything. So it should take care of all that stuff for you. The writer of ShareJS did bring up an interesting scenario, which is you uh, open this up, get on a plane, make a lot of changes, land on the plane, and then get off, reconnect to the internet. All of a sudden, all your changes are broadcasted out, and everyone else's changes are pulled in. So it, it does have sort of a weird setup for that, but. If you're using a collaborative document, like in that way, then that's just sort of the nature of the beast. Um, under the share, oh yeah. So um, I didn't look too much on other than text errors. Maybe I was a little too in the mindset of my Stackathon project, which basically was a text error. Um, my understanding is that it does other things, um, and it needs to, for instance, like with the JSON object. Uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly how to implement that uh, off the top of my head. Okay, thanks. <laughs>